dancers. Can you make some noise? They're just starting out their careers, so they need the love a little bit more than me. Um, no, welcome to Songs of Bruin. I think that you guys are going to have a fabulous time because these two, I cannot remember a, a pair so funny and so full of stories. Um, but before we get started with them telling a couple of yarns, I would love to do some trivia with you. How's that? <laughs> um, yeah, I, would you like to do some trivia? and then you're going to decide whether it was about Steve or Paul. <laughs> so, uh, number one, who had a dog named Bojangles but called him Bojo for short? Steve! Okay, so I think now we're feeling Steve. Is it, is it true? It's true, yeah. Yeah? Bojo, I, I love it, I love it. Only you, Steve. Uh, number two, who has a collection of vintage lunch boxes? Oh. Okay. How how are we feeling about that one? That's true. <laughs> well, the reason I collect lunch boxes is when I went to school in elementary school, your social status was determined by whether or not you had the most recent lunch box. <laughs> and so when I, as I've gotten older. I dreamed about having every lunchbox you could have. It just made me feel like I rule the world. <laughs> Lunchboxes is a status symbol. We need to get it in People magazine. <laughs> All right, uh, number three. Who boxed Roberto Duran on that? <laughs> Steve was the original opponent, but he pulled out. <laughs> Boxeritis interruptus. <laughs> Y'all needed to make these questions harder. Uh, number four, uh, whose confirmation name was Joshua? Ooh. Do we want to reveal? My name is Stephen Joseph Joshua Paul. So nice they gave him a middle name twice. All right, and for the final one, who has made 175 jumps skydiving? Okay, all right, so we're feeling Paul. Paul? That is correct. Yeah. living in my trailer uh, right shortly, shortly after I left home and uh, me and my cousin was watching TV and there was a commercial came on so you said there's a guy standing there like a used car salesman he goes you can skydive <laughs> so we went down there and we uh, we uh, started jumping out of airplanes and uh, it was a lot of fun and it's a real scary thing to do <laughs> I jumped a whole bunch of times, but I never got over the fear of it, so I finally just quit. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> and so, thank you so much for playing a little trivia with me. Give it up for Steve Holtz and Paul Gore. y'all's recovering. Yeah. yeah, all right. You brought it on yourself. I don't feel sorry for you. Anyway, I'm glad to be able to hear, uh, share the stage with my dear friend Steve Poles. He's a one in a million. Great guy. I woke up and my guitar, Smokey Joe, was buzzing in the jack. <laughs> <laughs> 
so they have this guitar backstage, and Smokey Joe wanted to be on stage just like, because this is a conjugal visit with this guitar. <laughs> Smokey Joe wanted to make sure, because I only travel with one guitar, and it's this old Taylor that Bob Taylor gave me 25 years ago, and he keeps giving me new ones, but I only bring one guitar, and it's this one. And I'm obsessed with it. So I don't even go to guitar stores. Like a lot of people go to guitar stores, but if I do, and I come back to the hotel room, Smokey Joe's like, where were you? <laughs> you were playing a Gibson, weren't you? <laughs> Let me smell your fingers. And so, <laughs> so Smokey's gonna watch over just to make sure there's nothing too untoward with this guitar. <laughs> I would like to thank all the great crew here because they just yeah. like, oh, don't worry about it, we got a guitar for you. So it's pretty really cool. We practiced basketball all summer. In hopes that we would make the junior high squad. We ran our asses off that summer in hopes that we'd wear those blue and white tank tops, bouncing balls in the gym for all the ninth grade cheer. about five foot two and 98 pounds soaking wet but only 15 guys can make that team me and Moki we had a drink 15 guys he said yeah we were hoping it'd be both of us It'd be both of us. Mr. Hamilton doubled as the art teacher and the basketball coach. <laughs> he was a nice enough man, stood six foot seven, played some college ball. We always hoped that if we took his art class, he'd like us more. on his team.
But it was nowhere to be found It was nowhere to be found Said I need you on the wrestling team. I need a 98 pounder. I need a 98 pounder. Hey, everyone just wants to be needed. Everyone just wants to be greeted with a big hello. Everyone just wants to be needed. And where are you? 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 church and uh, she's a wonderful lady she uh, turned to Christianity she used to be a Jehovah's Witness and uh, she's a wonderful sweet lady that does a lot of good things in the church but like all of us she has a past and I'm gonna sing about her past
western part of Portugal and then I asked this uh, guy from Portugal because I can speak Spanish pretty good but I can't speak Portuguese so I said amigo donde esta el baño uh, yo soy de California and then he looked at me and goes hey dude I'm from Seattle <laughs> so this is so long ago and so I he was the coolest guy his name was Jim Wiggins and he would, he ended up following me around to Barcelona and everywhere and I was playing on the streets and I would earn money every day, like a hundred bucks. And I would say to the audience at the end of the show, whatever money I make in my guitar case, those that are left, I'm gonna spend it all on us drinking. And so it was like first experiments in socialism. And so I would take everybody out and just give them, give the money away to everyone. We'd all drink, it was amazing. And then I lost touch with this guy and he was so good at what he did because he would act like he didn't know me. And whenever you're a busker on the streets and you've got your guitar case there, some people are afraid to cross the line of demarcation because they don't want to get in front and have people see them. So he would come and grab the hat off my head and go up to people and go, this guy's great, and would collect money. <laughs> Once we realized that, we were moving up to like 500 bucks a day. And we were a team. And then he left and we lost track in Morocco somewhere, in Casablanca, we lost track of each other. And I thought, I'm never gonna see this guy again because Facebook didn't exist or any of that. It was years ago. And then out of the blue, I got a letter uh, uh, through Facebook and he said, hey dude, remember me, it's Wiggins. Remember Barcelona, remember Portugal? And I immediately wrote him back. I said, I'm so happy you wrote me. He goes, I wrote you for one reason. He goes, last night I took a hit of acid and I said to myself, Steve Polk should write a song called Fist Fight at a Vegan Lunch. <laughs> now we're reconnected. I was like, this song writes itself. <laughs> I was driving through Tempe, hungry for some Tempe, looking for some vegan fare. Music being cranked through the air. When along came a girl to brighten up my world, she started some trouble at the co op. I'm a happy hippie, I'd rather just say yippee, but her boyfriend was as violent as a meat eating cop. Oh, money, 
piece on your deathbed. Oh, money, Padme, oh, money, Padme, oh, money, oh, money, Padme, oh, two bones at the end. Oh, money, Padme, oh, money, Padme, I'm going to Australia in two weeks, and that was where I debuted this song. And a little kid came up and told me his favorite song was the one where I said, Oh, mommy, take me home. <laughs> I went to a meditation just to get some inspiration after I got stitches in my head. She had a skill. She could crochet things real good. And uh, like she would make blankets for the shut-ins. And she even made me a little toboggan when I was a little boy. And if you stand in the church, and if you if she liked you, before I say this, this is not a I'm not making this up, it's true. If she, if you're a man in the church and she liked you, she would crochet you a cock sock. <laughs> Chili well, I saw it. This is before the chili peppers. This is when they had the flames. Anyway. But anyway, uh, and, uh, I saw her, as a child, I saw her handing these things off to different men. And, and, and not, not once did I ever see anybody return one because it wasn't the right size. <laughs> Which let me know. There was something going on in the church that they weren't sharing with the children. But anyway, great precious memories. Uh, but this, this, what I, this song I'm going to sing, it's not about that, but uh, thank God. But, uh, you know, I see everybody sitting out there today, and like I said, some of it's recovering, some of it feel good, some of it feel this or that, but uh, if you have done enough with your life that you've made it here, you've done something good in your life, and I'm proud of you for that. Yeah. But sometimes I doubt myself. Sometimes I'll say, am I living this the way I ought to be living it? Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I need to change 
Oh, by the way, uh, they are recording this show. And you can buy a copy of it uh, at, the, at the, the merch here. Like somebody is recording this shit. But anyway, man, that's amazing. I worship you. All right, you know, there's two kinds of married people in the world. The kind that loves one another, like so many of you out there, uh, having a wonderful life, facing problems and good times together. Uh, but this next song, I mean, this other group of people that uh, I'm talking about in this category, they're the type that each night when they kneel by their bed, they pray that their mate will pass away. <laughs>
I, at some point in every show, I will say, this is the greatest show I've ever played. And I mean it. Because my dad, Joe Holtz, taught me to visualize and, and your own day, how it's going to be when I was a kid, when he'd say, you can do anything. And so he told me, visualize the show happening, and it's going to be your best ever. So I was in Australia playing a huge festival called Woodford Folk Festival, and I was on the stage, and I said, this is the greatest show I've ever played. And the audience cheered. They were so happy. And I went to Melbourne to play a show. And this guy showed up with his kid, who was at my show. And I guess his kid had said to his dad, Dad, we're seeing him, but the other show was the greatest show we ever played. So he said he didn't want us to come to another show because it would be downhill from there. Because that's what I said on stage. And so he came to the show in Melbourne, and in the middle of my show, I said, this is the greatest show I played. So when I was signing CDs after the show, his dad said, my son, it feels really sad. It was like when you find out Santa Claus isn't real. And so he wants to know, he thought that other show was your greatest show. And I looked at that kid and I said, every show is the greatest show. And every day is the greatest day. Do you hear me? And then he started crying. And then I hugged him because dad told me to stop. made that part up because it sounded good at the time. Sometimes I can't control what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I baked a hundred loaves of bread, I fell down on my head, I packed until I sweated ate food that I regretted. I sat near the fire wearing questionable attire. I made a new incision to improve my circumcision, or yeah. <laughs> Tabulia felt kind of groovy, watched every single movie Well, you know I've been depressed, I never even got dressed I was feeling full of pity, so I joined a subcommittee uh -huh. <laughs> I learned the word abrogation, tried to find a new vocation Searched a whole skyscraper, trying to steal some toilet paper Made a bong out of a peach, I learned to brush my teeth with bleach Prayed for a vaccine, I learned about hydroxychloroquine, yeah <laughs> I was sitting on the toilet trying to get some unemployment. I stayed in the bathroom for a meeting on Zoom. Forgot I wasn't wearing pants and I did a little dance. I was jiggling out alone and everybody got a free show. Quarter inch. I wore my sleeve on my heart. I found a new body part. I learned about zinc sulfate and how to meditate. I was naked in a cape. I tried to do some manscape. I lost a little bit of blood. Still felt like a stud. Uh -huh. Little kid, I thought I got COVID. Listen to Jerry Garcia, made my own tortillas. Found a new cake mix. I checked my body for ticks. Got run over by a bus and a tornado almost killed us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I became unemployed, started getting paranoid. I was eating a burrito and got bit by a mosquito. Grew a garden full of cheer. I got cauliflower here, read all of Macbeth, and I learned how to cook meth. <laughs> I my curtain shut, I was acting like a nut, I've been growing out my stubble, I've been living in a bubble, everything was unbearable, started feeling terrible, thought I should buy a gun, instead I got a man bun. <laughs> I got to get some social distance to help with my existence, need some logical assistance to a path of least resistance, feeling undesirous and no one wants to hire us, I learned every song by Miley Cyrus and all about coronavirus. <laughs> least essential worker, you don't even have to ask. I use my undies for a mask. Well, you know I understand. I gotta wash my hands. I might have worms, but I don't have demon sperms. I got a stimulus check, but I feel like a wreck. I become a decent cook. I read every single book. Well, I might blast off, but I cover my cough. My pants are getting baggy, and I'm looking kind of shaggy, uh -huh. I can make a big crescendo, you know, I cut my hair, but I just don't care. Maybe I should join the Navy, I should give myself a shave. I accidentally got a COVID kiss, I think I need an exorcist. Hell! I don't really want to butt it, but I'm feeling like a shut in. I've been sweating in my body and I'm looking kind of snotty. Need a nurse, I suppose to shove a q tip up my nose. I'm getting kind of grouchy, I'm in love with Dr. Fauci. Uh -huh. I guess I could steal a tent, or maybe go and rob a bank and watch my arteries harden until I get a pot. Don't need to wear shoes or get so hit snooze. I was born to lose, I got the quarantine blues. My goal is to write a 
my song without a chorus. Just only verses. You succeeded. <laughs> you succeeded in not finishing it. It's all how you look at it. It ain't finished. Anyway, uh, during one of my shows, uh, I did this bit where uh, I asked who was on the cruise by themselves, you know, without a date, and uh, raise your hand, and, and a lot of them did. And I spotted this one guy that looked just extra pitiful. <laughs> and, uh, I had bought a back scratcher on the, on the shore. Uh, paid. The lady wanted 10, but I got it down to five. So I had this $5 back scratcher. And I felt impressed during the show to give it to this man that didn't have a date. I told him, I gave him some instructions. I said, look, go back to your room, turn on some, some nice sauce music, you strip off, lay on the bed and get that back scratcher and rub your back with it and just pretend you got somebody. <laughs> and then uh, after that, you know, uh, just cry and go to sleep. <laughs> terrible feeling to be attracted to a female or a male and uh, and you want to press your lips against theirs but they only want to be your friend. That's what this song's about. I hope that man enjoyed that back scratch. <laughs> you smile at me but your green eyes never linger, you turn away. You talk to me and twirl your long hair with your finger, I'm blown away. And you don't
She was born on February 19, 1958, and I was born on February 19, 1960. Oh, and we're super close, and I love her. And I'm so glad I got to bring her on this cruise. So I want to dedicate this song to my sister, Cap. Okay? Here goes. <laughs> We lived on Holliston Street in the 60s. We didn't need much back then, just a smile. Mama would sing and buy us ice cream. And we would listen. We would come more for dinner on Sunday. He taught piano to my sister Kath, and I'd stand behind and imitate him, and she would laugh. And Uncle Louie get mad. <laughs> and if I knew then, would have known now. I would end brush the growing old. I take the flu, the measles and the blues. I guess I'd do as I was told. Kathy would walk up ahead and I'd follow. She seemed so big back then and me so small. Mama would give me one dime and her two nickels, and I would cry, cause she got more. <laughs> and if I knew then, would I know now? I would end rush the growing old. I take the flu, the measles and the blues, and I guess I do as I was told. They let us stay up real late to watch Ed Sullivan. And we saw the Beatles two times that year. And Daddy would laugh and say, look at that dumb hair. <laughs> but I like John. And I love John. And I'd give up candy for Lent in the springtime. Mama was proud, and so were the nuns. I thought it was okay to eat the candy if the wrapper was on. <laughs> I was just sucking out the juices, <laughs> the juices of life, life, life. And if I knew then, would I know now? I wouldn't rush the growing on. I take the flu. 
the measles and the blue. And I guess I do as I stole.
it's cool. We got to be the first show today here in Stardust, and I'm the last show tonight. I'm playing a show at 1045. Will people still be awake? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Hey, I would like to wish my wife Sharon a happy birthday today.
She was having trouble, like I was. And uh, I went out to the car. <coughs> she was nervous. She, she had a little car, and she was fixing to leave. And I just turned her face, and I said, you can do anything.
you got to meet him, he loved you. I'll never forget him sitting in his room on this boat, and he peeked around the side of the balcony, and he said, Steve, two days into the trip, I never want this to end. <laughs> We lost him a, a couple years ago now, and here he goes. He'd say Bahutensi when he coughed, and that means many blessings, let's go nuts. We were all along a conveyor belt in a factory on the wheel of time. Yeah, we don't know when our car clocks out. It was yesterday we were in our prime.
and, and manifest it so they know it. And today I want to thank Steve for sharing the stage with me. I want to thank all of y'all for coming uh, to this show. Y'all could have done some other things. I love you. I appreciate you, and I hope to see you again. Gather round a marble tombstone with regret. 